All right, here we go. It is the final lesson of the semester. This is part two of equilibrium. So what I'm gonna do in this particular video is discuss five examples, one truss and then four beams. These examples uh, will conclude the unit and will conclude our semester. Remembering from the previous video, equilibrium for a rigid body in two dimensions must satisfy the following three equations. The first two being that the net forces in the horizontal and vertical direction must be zero. Recall this sigma operator means net or total. And then we have a third condition, which is that the net moment about any point should be zero. It doesn't matter which point you choose, but it's preferable to choose a location where the most amount of unknown forces have lines of action passing through it. In this next example, we have a truss. Notice that there are three external forces acting on it, and in addition to three forces acting at the supports. This support is a pin, and this support over here is a roller. The pin support has two forces acting, one horizontal and one vertically, and the roller has one force acting in the vertical direction. The direction that you assign to these vectors, representing the supports, is arbitrary, meaning that if you get a negative answer, you could always switch the direction. Here is the analysis of the reaction forces for this truss. Notice that when analyzing the X equation for equilibrium, we find that the reaction at the pin support in the horizontal direction is 90 kilonewtons. Notice that the direction of the reaction, which I call Rx here, is pointing to the left. I assume it's to the left because the only other force acting horizontally is this 90 kilonewton force acting to the right. In the vertical direction, to satisfy equilibrium, we want to equate all of the downward forces to all of the upward forces. So the upward forces here are the reaction forces, RA and RD. And the downward forces are the 40 and 70 kilonewton forces, respectively. You can see in contrast to the previous uh, lecture, I've gone with a more, more relaxed uh, analysis, meaning that I'm not writing the direction on each of the vectors here. I'm just simplifying the notation a little bit because um, you don't need to be that explicit with the directions as long as you're consistent in your algebra. So in this case, th we result in an equation which says that RA and RD add up to 110 kilonewtons. At this point, there is an insufficient amount of equations to solve for these three variables. We have three variables, Rx, RA, and RD. Therefore, we need three unique equations that is that are not redundant to get a full solution for all three of those reaction forces. In order to achieve this, we introduce a third equation, which is that the moment about one of the points on the structure is zero. So I chose the location A, because that's where the most number of unknown forces and lines of actions go through. You could have chosen any point along the truss, and I encourage you to try B, C, or D, and you'll see that you'll get the same answer potentially with a bit more algebra. When analyzing the net moment about A, we need to see which forces produce a moment. And those forces are the 90 kilonewton force, the 40, the 70 kilonewton force, and RD. Well, let's see which ones are going clockwise and counterclockwise. Clockwise, we have the 40, the 70, and the 90. That's why you see the negative signs there. How about their lines of action? The 90 kilonewton force, its line of action extends thus far, so its distance is two meters. That's why you see a two here. The 70 and the 40 are easier to identify the distances for the lines of action. The 40 kilonewton force is three meters away, and the 70 is six meters away. So you see the 40 has a distance of three, and the 70 kilonewton force has a distance of 6. 
in order for equilibrium, we do need to have at least one force going the other uh, direction. And you see that RD here does produce a counterclockwise moment. Counterclockwise is positive. And how far is RD's lines of action? Well, its line of action is nine meters away from A. If we simplify this equation, we can quickly get to an answer that RD is 80 kilonewtons. And then if we take that value and substitute it back into this equation, we finally get that RA is 30 kilonewtons. Notice that none of our answers had negative signs. And what that means is that the assumptions for the directions of each of the vectors at the reaction forces uh, were correct. All right, let's take a look at our first beam example. Here we have what is called a simply supported beam. Simply supported means that there is a pin at one end and a roller at the other end. Remember that a pin has two reaction forces, whereas a roller has one reaction force. Well, this beam has no obvious uh, forces acting on it, so why would there be reaction forces? And the answer is that the beam has a mass of 1200 kilograms. So we must consider the mass of the beam in the calculation. And that mass will represent or manifest itself as a weight force in the free body diagram. Here's the free body diagram and there is that weight force. That weight is calculated by multiplying the mass by the gravitational constant G and of course affixing a direction. So the weight of this beam is 11,772 newtons acting in the downward direction. By symmetry, you can see that the weight of the beam is halfway. Let's take a look at the conditions for equilibrium now to calculate the reaction forces acting on this beam. Remember, net force in the horizontal and vertical direction and a moment equilibrium equation. Firstly, in the horizontal direction at the pin support, we notice that R1 is the only force acting horizontally on this free body diagram. Therefore, R1 has to be zero for equilibrium. Next, we can move to the moment equation, or we could go to the force uh, equation in the y direction. I just chose the moment equation to uh, give you a bit of variety in the algebra. If we look at the net moment about A, there are only two forces that are generating a moment. That is W and R3. W is imparting a negative or clockwise moment, and R3 is imparting a positive or counterclockwise moment. That's why you see the minus and the plus signs here. W's line of action is 1.8 meters away from A, and R3's line of action is double that, or 3.6, the full span of the beam. With this information, we can very quickly get to a solution for R3, which I've written here in kilonewtons. Finally, if we look at the net force in the vertical direction, we know that whatever forces act up must total and be equal to whatever forces act down. So R2 and R3 are acting in the upward direction, and W is acting in the downward direction. We can substitute the value for R3 and we can substitute the weight of the beam, which we know, and quickly solve for R2. Notice that all of our answers were positive. See, we had a positive answer here, and we had a positive answer there. Meaning that our assumptions for the directions of these vectors for the reaction forces was correct. One more thing. This question is very uh, basic in terms of intuition meaning you could just guess the answer for R2 and R3 being half of the weight. If you take the weight and divide by 2, you get 5886 newtons. And that's because of symmetry. So if you do see symmetry in a question, take advantage of it, because you should. Let's take a look at this next example. Here we have a beam identical to the previous example, but we've introduced a 25 kilonewton force at mid-span. Let's see how the math uh, changes and how the math is similar to the previous example. Basically, this 25 kilonewton force 
will manifest itself in two terms in the following equations. In the vertical equation, we have another downward force of 25 kilonewtons. And in the moment equation, this 25 kilonewton force produces a clockwise moment, hence the minus sign here. And that moment is about A. I just want to mention as a footnote here that this 25 kilonewton force could be added directly to this number here and you would get a total value in the vertical direction. And you could actually just answer the question really fast that way. Furthermore, these reaction forces are still the same. Why? Because the loads on the beam, W and 25 kilonewtons respectively, are both at mid-span. And because of symmetry, we would expect that the reaction forces should be the same. So the analysis for this example follows closely to the previous one, and I think that's all I'll say for that at this point. In this next example, I have two 25 kilonewton forces acting along the span of the beam. This diagram is also symmetric, and the beam is identical to the original of this set of examples. I want to point out that uh, by symmetry, you could calculate the reaction forces very fast. However, I will do the analysis in a more rigorous way than that. So here's the free body diagram. And let's draw comparisons to the original example of the beam itself without the additional forces. So the weight of the beam is here. And the reactions are here. And we have our two new forces here of 25 kilonewtons. Let's see how those new forces manifest themselves in these equations for equilibrium. And here they are, two additional downward forces. And in the moment equation, we have two additional terms for positive moments about A. Other than that, the math is the same. Since R1 is the only force acting in the horizontal direction, by equilibrium conditions in the horizontal direction, it must be zero. In the y direction, we notice that R2 and R3 have to equal whatever that total downward force is, that is the weight and the two 25 kilonewton forces. It's the moment equation that reveals the uh, big step in this question, in this solution. So. You can see here that R3 and R2, I, they are identical. And that makes sense because this diagram is symmetric. What I'd like to do in the next example is cover something that is non-symmetric. And at this point, you would not be able to just obviously look at the question and say by symmetry what the answers are for the reaction forces. OK, this is our last working example with beams. And in this case, we have a force of 25 kilonewtons. However, it is not at mid-span, meaning that symmetry cannot be used to look at the reaction's forces. However, you could use some ratios involving the lengths of 0.9 and 2.7 meters, or something involving levers, to figure out those uh, reaction forces. I don't want to cut any corners here with the method. I'm going to try to do this with the equations for equilibrium as presented at the beginning of this presentation. Okay, let's take a look at the analysis for the forces acting on this beam, the reaction forces. Here we have two reaction forces at the pin and one at the roller. Furthermore, we have a downward force of 25 kilonewtons and a weight of W. We can see from the net force in the x direction that the reaction force R1 has to be zero since it is the only horizontal force. In the y direction, the forces acting up are R2 and R3, and the forces acting down are W and the 25 kilonewton force. They sum up to 36,772 newtons. This equation has two variables, meaning we need an additional equation that is not redundant. And that is the moment equation. If we look at the moment about A, there are three forces that produce a moment about A that is not zero. The ones in blue here are the clockwise moments, or negative, And the one here, R3, is counterclockwise, or positive. 
there's that plus sign. We can solve this equation since it has one variable and the solution for R3 is here or presented here in kilonewtons and with the appropriate direction. You can go back to this equation here and solve for R2 quickly and there is the answer for R2. Since this diagram has a non-symmetric uh, forces acting on it of uh, 25 kilonewtons and W, that means that we don't expect R2 and R3 to necessarily be the same value or in some interesting proportion. So there are some patterns, but they're beyond the scope of this discussion. And for the stronger students that see the patterns, I encourage you to take advantage of it and definitely uh, minimize how much you have to do. I do reward you for your creativity and I do appreciate it. So that concludes the examples for beams, at least the ones that I'll work through with you. Here's an example for you to try on your own and the solution is on Blackboard. I'd like to point out that in this case, the 25 kilonewton force is at an angle of 40 degrees with respect to the span of the beam, meaning that this reaction force in the horizontal direction, which I called R1 for example, it's not going to be zero because now it has to counteract the horizontal component of that force. So take a good effort, try this question, and if you do get the answer as on Blackboard, then you are in excellent shape for this material. So that concludes the example, that concludes the chapter, that concludes the semester, and that concludes our year together. It sucks that we didn't get a chance to see each other in person um, under the interesting times that we are in and the isolation that you might be experiencing. I do want you to know that I miss you guys and I really had a great year with you. And I hope that uh, we get to do this again with another course in the future semesters. So thank you very much for your time and take care of yourselves.